Do you remember when we went on uh, on the radio station in Seattle and we were just right. we were just three dullards because <laughs> suddenly we're in a we're suddenly we're surrounded by professionals with equipment that costs more than four hundred dollars and we were hey, like this isn't Luke, how Luke, yeah it was uh, Burbank from, yeah, yeah Luke yeah. Burbank Luke who was a gr- you know very Great very guy. nice guy and good guy mm-hmm. and he he really under it wasn't like we were on like the morning zoo either we were on with a very <laughs> kind. <laughs> person who was trying to kind of in, invite us into his world and right. we were like can we go back to the basement please <laughs> yeah. especially because it's like um hey everybody i'm here today with the guys from uh, you look nice today there a semi-professional podcast how's it going guys welcome to the studio today uh, uh, so you guys you guys have done audio before right uh, yeah. <laughs> you talked to roderick for a while <laughs> It was a we're we're we're, we're very hot house flowery. Like I think if you bring us out and try and try and if somebody asks you what this show is about, what do you you don't say anything. You just you turn around and you drop your drawers. I think. <laughs> nice today california king we're back now with uh scott adam from the <laughs> you look nice today uh scott scott you'll you may know this adam i don't know if you will but there's a radio station i don't i don't even know if it's still around but the famous like so there's a one radio station called koit koit and that's right. what you play because it's absolutely unobjectionable like right. every elevator and office has that on a little quiet. Like the elevator literally at Coit Tower has K-O-I-T in it. Right. Um, and then they play Christmas music at Christmas time. But there's this re- station called KFOG that was like, like an old school independent station. And they had this morning crew, not a morning zoo, but Dave somebody. And they had this group. And it was a little bit like, here's Dave. Dave's a guy who was like, he was around in the 60s and stuff. And he went to protest. And then they had their own kind of like a Robin, like a, like a laugh along lady. And then, and I was on one time to talk about productivity bullshit and take some calls about email. And I felt so, I felt like such a, talk about a hothouse flower, it was a hothouse weed. Like, get, get me back in the greenhouse where I belong. Hey, hey, Dave, how's it going? You like music? <laughs> well, you know, it's funny because, I mean, when I was growing up, of course, the only thing that we had to listen to was the radio. Uh, we had cassettes and we had the radio. And, we had four cassettes, so usually it was the radio. And that <laughs> format, you don't realize exactly how staid and how inflexible that format is until it tries to deal with have you ever heard of have you ever listened to like a morning crew try to address a social issue? They don't know. <laughs> they that it's like two rhinos trying to open a slice of American cheese. It's there's honk, honk. they're just not set up for it. <laughs> what, what a terrible day today in uh, New York City and Pennsylvania and Washington D.C. Honk. <laughs> <laughs> he said, "Let's roll." And now let's roll with the new Neil Young. <laughs> it is. It is it's, it's, it, you're right, though. It's it's um. But like the thing is, it's one of those things where it's like the guy who thinks he can win a fight in an alley, even though he's never been in an alley nor how to fight and yeah. you, you think like oh i could do this and it's so fucking hard it I is heard it this. is yeah there's a contest one time and this will date when this contest was but it was a contest for djs i feel like i might have hallucinated this but they played the beginning of the earth wind and fire song september and you had to like perfectly nail an effortless because you know on am radio you talk right up till the vocals start right right and so it was this contest to see who could like do banter best in the time you know oh it's like it's an art i don't want to do it fuck man no, we couldn't edit no. this jesus christ call the no. cops it, you know it's it it is a, it's an incredibly specific art and it's one that's easy to mock but then when again when i was younger especially in college and looking around for radio stations that were good and you come across uh like a small liberal arts college radio station and you yeah. hear them do their version of the the DJ banter and it's, it's such it's a style it's, and they pass it on to each other like uh, all the bad habits there's the guy we we ha- our radio station in Tallahassee was awesome and they'd won music director of the year to CMJ I think music director of the year two years in a row it was it was really a well regarded station for its size especially and this wonderful guy he, the guy who now works for the 
label that used to put out Chemical Brothers. He's like an A and R guy there. But his name was Errol, and Errol, Errol would talk like this, and he would say, and, and it, is, it is, of course, seven minutes before the hour of two. It's, like, well, it's not, of course, seven <laughs> oh, minutes before anything. What the fuck? And then everybody else at the station would go like, all right, welcome back to Monday Night Hootin' Annie, and of course, it's two minutes past the hour of ten. <laughs> oh, man, I had a pet peeve with bad radio, with bad DJ, because I listen to the jazz uh, station here in Los Angeles, and at some point in the last few years, they got... Um, a well-known jazz, sort of an adult contemporary soft jazz uh, saxophonist named David Sanborn. David, saxophonist, pianist, whatever, it doesn't matter. David sure. Sanborn became a DJ on this radio He's, He played on oh, everything. Wow. He was on Young Americans uh, by yeah. Bowie. He guested on Letterman all the time. And I had his He's, 1988 jazz pop album and loved it. He's very, yeah. like, mainstream. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, very yeah, squeaky alto sax. Yeah, he has one sax. great... Yeah. He has one great hit, and he'll He's play got a that. Good skronk, though. <laughs> <laughs> um, but anyway, his his uh, his 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 peccadillo is that he'll uh, he'll read through the playlist that he's that he's played in the last hour. But he'll say, and he and we played, uh, you know, we we played this, we played uh, sing sing sing, we played uh, we played uh, Teen Town. And then we played, and he'll go, and then, and then, but he's going in reverse chronicle, chronicle, chronological order. It just killed me. Oh, <laughs> nails on a, nails on a chalkboard. Well, the, they, they, I think that at one point they finally printed this out and put it on the wall because everybody was so bad at it. And Arrow would have to keep calling people and yelling at them, say it, you know, play it, say it. Like it's really important that after yeah. you back announce, I think they call it. How do I know this? But like you, like you say, okay, that was you know our. Um, of course, <laughs> of course, it's twelve minutes after the hour of nine, and uh, that was Arches of Loaf with Web in Front, and that was Super Chunk with Hyper Enough or whatever. And you, but like when you do it wrong, it's so jarring. Yeah. And then problem is once you start <laughs> noticing someone's picadillo, you hate them. Yeah. <laughs> There's a guy. Yeah who's really cool he was great in the impeachment hearings i think his name's daniel goldman and i think he was one of the <laughs> Mueller guys and I, i'm going to give you my one it's going to this is going to sound very familiar but i'm going to give you my one syllable impression of how Dan, daniel goldman begins every sentence are you ready <clears throat> so <laughs> and the problem is you hear it once it's funny you hear it seven times it's pretty funny and then at a certain point you're just like you know rachel maddow is going to throw to him in a second and he's going to go so, <laughs> and like, God, thank you so much for your service, but God, I want to punch you in the throat. So I developed you know. an allergy to a version of that one. When, when we, we started watching CNN when Trump became president, and we had never spent more than five minutes watching cable news before then, but we were just so shocked, and we had some sort of syndrome. I don't know what Scandinavian city it was named after, but some syndrome made us have to watch the TV and see what was happening mm -hmm. to our country that way. And as soon as I picked up on every single pundit's intro, uh, which was, look, look, <laughs> look. That is the look. official, that should be the official slogan of the Lincoln Project. <laughs> look, look, <laughs> look. The, the other one that I like a lot from a newscaster that I enjoy, enjoy, is the way that Wolf Blitzer will always repeat the second to the last, last word, before the end of the sentence, the sentence. Oh. He's gonna get the papers, get the papers. Get no, the no, papers. now you're gonna hear it. You're gonna hear oh, it all the no. time. <laughs> seven thousand, seven thousand, seven thousand people died today, and may his memory be a blessing. Um, <laughs> My dad. You, you, we can't unhear yeah. it though, and then you're like, and each person with their fucking book up behind them, and you're like, oh god, all right, oh, you know. Do people it's, back to back to radio? Do people still listen to yeah. radio? Like my, this is bizarre. I think, but I don't know if it's actually normal. My daughter, when we get in the car, she doesn't want to listen to my carefully curated playlist of the greatest <laughs> hits of 1998. She wants to. <laughs> she she doesn't even want to put her phone. Like I would think that you know, I would think that these days my picture of how two adults and two teens share a car would be everybody's arguing over a slot to plug in their iPhone for their playlist. With my daughter, it's the opposite. She she unplugs my phone and she puts on KOIT, the light hit station. She wants to hear Whitney almost crying. She wants to hear... You're talking about the, the, the hits of, of the 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s and beyond? Right up to like today. She, she would right like up to, to hear today. that. 
Right up to today. Wow. That's she her cool preference. No, cool is a wonderful thing. That's so weird. Kids it's are so, so weird. fucking weird. It's the weirdest yeah. thing I could imagine. I wanted to check my work. Oh, on, it's the wrong right. Davis. David Benoit is the host on that jazz oh, channel. I, see. I don't want to. I don't. I don't want to. He d- totally, as far as I know, did not play on Young Americans unless he got cut out. How do you spell Benoit, that? Like a, How do you spell that? It's like uh, the same way as Benoit Balls. Yeah, uh, <laughs> he was, he, had, that was his, he was he was also he invented the Benoit Balls and he his his uh, his hit was Cast Your Fate to the Wind. Okay. Okay. Real, ben, 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 okay. All right. David and he's Benoit just cl- clanking guy, around. Uh, huh. He says it wrong. He does it wrong on radio. Anyway, Adam, are all sax does, players are all sax players named David? Like this yeah, David he's a, key, he's a keys player though. He's this guy. Like I got everything wrong. Oh fuck. Wrong. Well, Dave, Dave Brubeck <laughs> plays keys, but then yeah, he had he Paul Desmond. I think Paul Desmond was his sax player, if memory serves. And yeah. he took five, which <laughs> after did. that Miles Davis record is the one record, uh, jazz record that every white person owns. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, Scott, does does your daughter enjoy uh, D- Dave Brubeck? Like, yeah. where, where did she get the taste? <laughs> where, where did she get the taste to listen to the hits of the 80s and 90s? I uh, or up to today. <laughs> well, you know, there's a there's a significant genetic cluster in 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 my lineage, especially through my mother's side, which is gigantic. We're we're huge fans of 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 a power ballad with a Yamaha DX7 doing something wispy behind it. Like we, for my my mother, when we would drive, like I would I would make her listen to like Metallica for for the drive to the drugstore. And then for the drive from the drugstore, she'd be like, let's take that out. And it'd be like, I want to know what love is. Oh, and that's she would, exactly she would the song, because it has that one DX7 reed sound that totally yeah. dominated 1985. I didn't even know <laughs> that. I didn't. I, I had a friend who got a DX, DX7, and he played that sound, which is like, it's like a preset. And yeah. I didn't even know that was legal to do. I didn't know you were allowed <laughs> to make the same sounds as the sounds that were on records. Like I, that blew my mind when I realized that we could make terrible music in our basement. My mom had a really nice keyboard. You guys knew that my mom was in a band, Your right? My mom was in a band, right? She was in a band. I do remember this? Yeah. She, my my mother was in a band when I was in uh, high school. It was the best thing in the world. They practiced in our basement. Our basement right. was a center of so many joyous moments in, in my childhood. Oh, my dad, uh, my dad, as all dads in the 70s and 80s did, started on building a bar in the basement. <laughs> mm-hmm. Which, can, can we just pause? What is, what is the origin of the impulse to build a social drinking space in it's like the building most... a stadium in your closet. <laughs> it's, it makes no sense. I don't, I, I'll, he, we never had part. If we had parties, which we did, they were in our kitchen. They were never in our base. Nobody was ever like, let's go to the basement where Bill can stand behind a well-crafted tile topped bar that he, that he built with two neon <laughs> mirrored beer signs behind him that you could pull on with a pull cord so that he can pretend to serve us drinks it was it was it, he, it was he built it was the a bar. proto it was like a proto man cave at that point because i don't think a yeah. man cave was really like a, a you know like in a in the lexicon yet there was a den i i mean like i live in southern california we didn't really have basements but you know a den is where dude stuff happens as far right. as I understand. You, I understand. A rec, you get a rec room, you get a, a rumpus room. Yeah, right. Often you know. involves bumper pool, and you can flip the bumper pool and have it turn into a poker. And usually there's some yep. kind of a figure of a drunken man by a, by a lamppost. Is this, <laughs> is this the Mandela effect in reverse? Um, what would that be? The uh, I, I don't know history. But it seems like that's the kind of thing where, like, that's just that's just in our bones. There's something sure. in us. Like, we want to we want to eat, and we want to uh, have sexual intercourse, and we want to uh, make a small bar where we could make people listen to Steely Dan. That's maybe that's what it is. My grandfather had a bar in his house, and behind the bar was a crying clown on oh. black velvet. Oh, oh. wow! There is yeah, I feel, I feel it. No, 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 no I feel it. I feel it. I, I'm going to do that. Yes, <laughs> I totally, I totally, yes. Um, and that's also where where youngsters can then go and and, and do heavy petting. 
But right. related to this, Scott, knowing about your, your your so what was the name of your your, your one band? You were called the uh, Soldiers of Christ, uh, sure. weapons Soldiers weapons of Jesus. What was it called? <laughs> company of company Citizens company of praise. Patrol. Company of praise. Yeah, that's it. I, I, I remember this patrol. <laughs> That's right. It was we a were, Night Ranger cover band. We were company <laughs> Citizens of Praise. Citizens on Dawn Patrol. Well, Company of Praise did not. So that was one of the great things about my, first of all, having this half-finished basement, uh, yeah. was that my mother's band, Five of a Kind, which was all teachers, five teachers. Oh, I love it so much. I know. It was, they're fantastic. They played the, <laughs> they played the local dance skin convention. They played, they played a lot. They played the, the yacht club. Uh, they play a lot of the local York, Pennsylvania, you know, the social calendar, which was pretty stacked yeah. in York, Pennsylvania in 1986. It was uh, a five of a kind was there to play uh, your Del Shannons, your Roy Orbisons, oh, your your melodic oldies. Uh, you from want, the you 60s. Wah, 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 wah wonder. Right. That, That's right. That, that kind of thing. And she's and That's she's right. on the keys. Is that right? She's, she's my mom was on the keys and vocals. Uh, okay. They all they had a uniform. They all wore denim shirts tucked into Ugh. bright white pants. <laughs> well, what kind of shoes? Were they wearing like Keds? <laughs> I think that was uh, that was discretionary. Loafers, yeah, she was, probably. She was I would, loafers, I would, I would or like yeah, or maybe like a boat, a nice boat shoe if you're going to the yacht club. Get some Sperry top siders. When and, uh, and so she sang. She was she the front lady. She was she was no she was on the side. Okay. When they weren't when Five of a Kind wasn't in. In you know when the red light wasn't on over the the door to the basement, uh, it was it was just a basement full of musical instruments. There's a drum drums all all of the regular rock band instruments were set up and ready to go downstairs. So it was a dream. God. Company of Praise did not practice down there, of course, because we had a choir with us. So uh, that wasn't a basement. <laughs> band. Okay, I, I somehow in previous discussion of uh, <laughs> Citizens on Patrol, I somehow I somehow missed the part about the choir. Did they know yep. they were in the band or did you just kinda like show up behind them and start jamming? <laughs> it was a, it was like it was First like a flash John four, mod. seven and eight. <laughs> Wait, but it was all was it church rock music? It was all, and you rehearsed at the church entirely? That's right. That's right. It was church okay. rock. Um, yeah, the arrangements for church rock can be very, very com complex. I, I played drums in a church band accidentally. I didn't really know <laughs> oh, at man. the time what I was that? getting into, what I was being signed up for, and I quickly yeah. re realized the limits of my my drum sight reading abilities oh, yeah. because yeah, it's yeah. like complicated time signatures and a lot of fills and and some solos. So I, you know, I, I embarrassed myself not in not in front of just the old uh, the old. The yeah, before the eyes of but, before the eyes of the true God is how you embarrass yeah. yourself. <laughs> yeah, and, him but, too. But there's, but, but but there's something quiet. about like when you, you'd be flipping stations back when we listened to the radio in the car before my daughter would play DJ and and play you know queer Broadway shows at really loud volume. But um, but but when you did listen to the radio, sometimes you'd be going through in my case Florida and you land on something not so left on the dial that it's you know going to be a college station, but just a little bit to right of left of the dial. Right, sure. And you get sure. there's something about the soaring quality of Christianity. <laughs> and it's like yeah. somebody trying to go like, oh, did you realize the hot dogs were vegan? And you're like, yeah, I super did. Like, <laughs> there's something deeply wrong about what these people are doing. Oh, definitely. It's, it's, it's music it's so made hopeful. by people. It's music that sounds like it was made by people to whom the style of music was described. You know, they told <laughs> yeah. them. We just got a fax. Is, with we some got bullets. Facts. I read. Okay. I read half a book uh, that I found in a beach rental about what rock music <laughs> sounds like. Now we're going to take that. And we're going to take this Gideon Bible they also left and make something special. <laughs> and the youth minister what? just keeps saying it's got a beat. It's got a beat. And you go, oh, a beat. Okay, oh, a beat. We huh? did. And, we and we so did I need have... to. I need to say. I need to say. I need to save me. Save me, Jesus. Like yeah, yeah, but with a beat. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I played in a uh, for for like a few months in a Metallica cover band in high school, and I think I was probably what? freshman or sophomore. And then we got invited by one of the kids' churches to play in the talent show. Invited, I think we were sub we submitted ourselves into to the play in the talent show. But the the minister requested that if we wanted to play, if we wanted to cover Metallica for the talent show, we would have to alter the lyrics 
uh, oh. to praise to oh. praise him. Oh. <laughs> I don't remember. Okay. I don't remember okay. what was done. I don't remember what song. Probably Enter Sandman, but it it it, it <laughs> okay. Uh, it wasn't my responsibility for Let's obvious see. reasons. Uh, I, I would yeah. love to explore that because I think there's you really. You know, there was that service that was around for a while. I think it was called Video Angel. And it was such an interesting idea that could never have existed for long. Do you all remember this a few years ago? No, I've never. you could basically, this is so fucked. Oh, God. Okay, so real quick, real quick. Video Angel. <clears throat> I think we could do, my, what I'm pitching, pitching to you is we could do a version of Video Angel, but for material that might be considered too objectionable for a, you know, a non-secular format. Okay, but <laughs> Video Angel, you say, look, I don't like the word poop. I don't like vaginas. Like, sure. I don't like people leaving their car running. Like, whatever it is. <clears throat> and then you download a version of that movie where they took all that out, including oh, the plot. Oh, right. Okay. Now, here's the deal. <laughs> the way that this works, this is very much like when you go to a swap meet and you buy a nut and a bolt, you know, for a dollar and they give you a free beer. Wink. Like, <laughs> like they go, okay, well, so <laughs> we're going to give you this to download. But first, you need you need to rent a DVD. It's a virtual DVD. You rent a virtual... This sounds like something we would come up with. You rent a virtual DVD, and when you return it, you get most of the money back. And in the meantime, you've got a version of The Big Lebowski that's like six minutes long. <laughs> <laughs> So did you do a version of Enter Sandman that that was yeah cleaned up with? I believe we did. I mean, I don't I don't think we won the talent show, but we definitely participated in. There were at least seven people in the audience. It was definitely during the middle of the day, um, so it wasn't <laughs> a raucous affair. It wasn't necessarily. You probably couldn't the... play. You probably couldn't play super loud. Also, but you know, right? you're I mean, in a band and you're a kid, yeah. and you imagine that this is the rock star life, and and it's definitely going to lead to some, uh, you know, what you know. Sure, yeah, I know yeah, what you're yeah, talking about. You're talking about a little bit of this basement eat, stuff. Eat, 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 a little bit of rec room, a little bit of rumpus room is what you're saying. I know what you're That's talking right. about. I know what you're talking. Yeah, about. You start using words girls. like load in and sound check and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, oh. I don't oh. remember who 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 altered the lyrics. Probably Steve. Uh, Steve played the guitar, Ricky on bass. Oh, Steve. Oh, wow. Rick Master. Me on the pig skins. Wow. Back <laughs> right there on the traps. Yeah, traps. <laughs> with, thank you. With your alternate, your Bev Bevan grip. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Yeah. oh, man. there's Because the, there's a lot of stuff where you're like, you know, like I've said before, I think, with my kid when she was younger, she watches horrible, horrible shit now, and it's fine. But, like, when I was little, <laughs> you know, I, I, I it's a little kids are sensitive to different kinds of things. Maybe you're sensitive to, you know, to secular music, but, but there are kinds of things where you say like, oh gosh, I, I could, we could totally watch this except for this one scene, but maybe that is that scene crucial to that. And I just feel like that's the kind of thing where like, there's probably a lot of people out there, but you know what, let's go beyond video angel. That shit's gone. That's in the past, but yeah, there are people yeah. out there that would like things tweaked. Maybe, well, maybe bring in like a razzle dazzle, but, but some way to like yeah. make this more you. May, may I, May I interject with perhaps was an enhancement upon this. So Video Angel, a concept that already exists, and, and we could certainly do something in that space. But if we're looking forward to the future to maybe do something that takes that general idea and puts it, I don't know, into the hands of people who are really excited about technology, uh, augmented reality is... Hmm you know apple's rumored to be interested in in getting into it um we bought a uh what's it called where you put the oculus. goggles over your face and look like a dork an oculus yeah for christmas and are enjoying it very much so you know what about an augmented version of that concept where you know i don't like to see i don't like to see my children before noon okay so i put on my Angel fire glass. What am what are we calling them? My angel uh, angel wings. Let's see. I think I think they're called uh I think they're called uh dad halos. Da <laughs> Augmented angel sounds like a thing, but it might be Augmented might Angel. Be that sounds like porn. So if I if I don't yeah, want people to if studio. I don't want to, people to talk to me for like six hours after I get home. I mean, because one thing right. also the concept we could take from Video Angel in, in this AR environment. And we will, you know, we'll figure out the name, but like, sure. for example, like you, you don't want to show boobies. And so like you put a, put a black, you know, like rectangle over the boobies, or maybe you don't want to see a woman's eyes. Right. <clears throat> but, but you could have a virtual or an alternate, alternate, alternate 
version of that. So maybe your family is just yeah. represented by a series of, of obsidian blocks that you can't really see and eventually tune out. Or razzle-dazzle. No, real razzle-dazzle, like you would do to a ship in World War II. So you camouflage right. your family in such a way that your glasses make you think you live alone again like you want. The AR takes care of that. <laughs> Obviously, your family would impinge upon your daily life in some way. You would have to... You know, let's say dinner time, you 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 take the glasses off. But you know, you're waking up and you're walking in the shower. You don't want to see other people. You don't have to think about their stuff. So it just it just kind of edits them out. It razzle dazzles them out of the out of the scene. Um, I mean, obviously, you don't have to. This doesn't exclusively have to be something that that edits out. Right items from your world. It could, but for tax, be... for tax and legal reasons, they're still your family. Mm-hmm. I, I think. I mean, I don't know. We'd have to oh, work that paper. out with the, the, the licensing sure. in the EULA. It's going to be really complicated to get all that exactly right on the first cut. But well, like, uh, for example, with the with the with the Roomba by iRobot, they have something called a virtual wall, which is an area thing where you put down this this little thing. You say, "Don't go in there." That's where my that's where daddy's guitar is. Or or you say, please don't put your phone here because that's where my phone goes. Why are you sitting on my part of the couch? Maybe in addition to the blocks and the and the, the lack of eyes, maybe also then you get virtual walls where your family actually like can't get too close to you. Just for like six to <laughs> they don't $10. even they don't even know there's a basement. When they put on their glasses, there's just a wall there. there Looks no like door. nothing to me. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Would, uh, um, Westworld. Instead of removing them from your life or obstructing them from your view. Would your family be more tolerable to you if they all had your face? If you Aphex twin them, for instance, yeah, <clears throat> oh, with think. augmented reality, would that? Or would maybe that it's be a, a beloved nightmare? branded character. Would, maybe you want everybody to look like people from um, McDonald Land. So oh, maybe sure. maybe you, you make your baby look like Grimace, and that delights you. And then because he can't hear the scream, Grimace <laughs> screams of hunger, sadness, and pain, <laughs> owing to the black blocks. But but you know, it's a branding opportunity also. But you're, so if I hear what you're saying, you turn them you turn them into the one thing you can love, or used to love, which is yourself. Let <laughs> yeah. it begin with me. Yeah. Do they know you've done this to them? And second, can they do they it must. and turn to you? I think I think that what we get to. I mean, you never want to sell a product. You want to manufacture and sell a product that you only are selling to one member of a household obviously this has got to go to everybody so everybody's got these everybody's got this augmented view of the world that may or may Uh not cut you out for certain portions of the day and you don't know that you might be a brand you might be the hamburglar at that particular moment when you're trying to have a yeah. very serious conversation right, wait, right, with wait, wait what do you have what do you have my face as right now? i'm trying to talk to you <laughs> yeah. you're, you're telling what me my that face? I, I have been i've been dora the explorer for the last year is that <laughs> backpack backpack is that, that's all i ever say when we're in bed you that's what you do you put that on me <sighs> oculus talk about an oculus rift <laughs> <laughs> wow Uh, Scott, uh, I'm sorry to change the topic. I'm trying to stay focused. Is there any chance that we would be able to guess the four cassettes? Oh, um, well, let, no, me, no. let me try well, and try. The, and the and question, question is, could we do it? And then if we could, could we take a crack at it? Maybe an Adam and I take a crack. It's, a, it's like a Funko Pop. It's like a blind box for Scott's youth. And we could tell you if we thought it was, for example, something by Billy Joel, almost definitely. <laughs> yeah, well... I, I will say, you know, these were not my cassettes. They were the family cassettes. Um, but they reflected my... Oh, they were the cassettes that everybody in our family could agree on when I was 14, my sister was 10, and my mother was uh, 40-something. I want to say... Was at least when... one of them a musical? A musical or a soundtrack? No, we were not musical people. I Out think that... Um, I think that can I guess one of them? Sure. Um, I think Wham Wham <laughs> could have been one. Okay. Okay. Uh-huh. No. 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 It wasn't. I mean, I I know why you guess this. Let me just let me just oh, tell you. I think. No. No. Oh, Billy yeah. Joel Greatest Hits. That was one. Okay. Um, Abba <laughs> Greatest Hits. Abba Gold. Just and just so we're clear, a graduation can't hang on the wall. A diploma can. <laughs> but that doesn't make sense. Don't say that. Even if it's in Allentown. I know it's Pennsylvania. It's very close to, to your heart. 
Fucking, yeah, my, that's a, my that's wife, a good album. It's that brown cover with Billy Joel on it. I know that one. That's a really good one. My wife sings, uh, whenever something Pennsylvania related comes up in the news, she sings Allentown and, and points at me and goes, you, you. I'm like, that's, that's so far from us. <laughs> In ways, it's like if it's like if Adams if something came up about Humboldt County and they pointed it and we're like you, you like M16s right. and and illegal marijuana growth and uh, you know we all go down together. Yeah, it was. Uh, it was well. I think I've we've talked about this before to some to, at some somewhere, mm-hmm. but our Audi 5000 was struck by lightning in Indiana in the middle of the night in 1980 something and after that the cassette player would not eject that was one you know how like when when people get hit by lightning and suddenly they can't like say the s sound like the car seemed okay the only thing it really didn't want to do was eject a tape the tape that was in there it's like if black mirror were were based in 1987 it was a it was a a retro black mirror (laughs) it was it was paul simon's graceland Oh, Which is man, not down a, the street. I mean, <laughs> I'll, I pretend, I'll pretend <laughs> that I don't think that that's the best thing ever, but I honestly, I kind of, it's, it's, oh, it's, it's great and could be very, I want to hear all of these, but it could also be easily adapted, even without Lady Smith, Black Mambazo. Sure. Could be very much adapted to the Lord, you know? Oh, Graceland. you better believe it. You better believe it. There's, yeah, man, I mean, there's a lot down of the street. He's feeling strong. Oh, oh. You got to tell the Lord, get right with the Lord, get right with the Lord. I'm going to drink that communion wine. Transubstantiation. Well, that was Paul Simon's whole, like half of his gig was 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 uh, oblique references to the New Testament. Hmm. Huh. I think. I mean, Paul Simon. I, did, like, I know Dylan. Dylan likes him a Bible. I don't think it was the, I don't think it was a Bible so much as just the that strain uh, of American culture that's about redemption and uh, sin. Not nah, sin is the wrong word, but. Uh, original sin. DOS. Yeah. yeah, like yeah. the one the one that we were born with and you can't get rid of and then you feel bad about for the rest of your life until you just <laughs> black out your family with AR. So we got Billy Joel's Greatest Hits Volume 1, unless you got yeah. like a box set. Graceland. Graceland, Abba. Memphis, Tennessee. Um, Which one? Greatest Hits? Abba Gold, yeah. Greatest so Hits. So good. Yeah. Oh, my God. And what's the, what's the fourth one? Um, Elijah? I, I don't, you know, I don't know what else there would have been in there. We, we were really a... We were really a, a Graceland family once the lightning bolt decided that for us. You have to get a new car. You know, like say, oh, you got to empty the ashtrays, you know, buy a new car. In this case, like, that's fucking re- Indiana, middle of the night. We bought that car uh, right when the Audi, the Audi brand had just sort of emerged mm-hmm. as, 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 as not necessarily equal to BMW or Mercedes, but in, in the same world. And the 5,000, the flagship car, the, the nicest Audi 5,000, whatever, S. And then almost immediately, the, uh, what was it called? The scandal. There was a big scandal. Was there? Acceleration? Was it rapid acceleration? Maybe? Yeah, the rapid acceleration scandal, which was almost certainly a social, socially created, mm-hmm. not real, non-mechanical issue where the cars would suddenly accelerate and Uh people were getting killed because almost certainly people were hitting the accelerator pedal and not the brake and then later saying that i had a friend uh whose mom drove a mercedes uh she's in the garage and she drove it straight into the kitchen uh, (laughs) and swore up and down up and down up and down down. slamming on the brake something wrong with this goddamn this is never this has never happened this has never happened before i drive this car every day But what is it with the Germans, guys? Pump the brakes, literally. Oh, boy. My yeah, mom really put the drove what, an Audi 5. I'm just recalling now. Like, it had a hump in the back seat for me. A hump, you yeah. know, in the middle. Okay. Did, yep, yep. It well, it, it, had that, it had that German, the, those German touches, like the the armrest in the back was, was for your skis to put back into the trunk. Oh, like, it had those yeah. German features that American right. cars were like, we, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> Mm-hmm. It's a gun and <laughs> our car was was great until one very scary night driving through Indiana. There was a an electrical storm that, like a movie level 
like of somebody's turning into a superhero level electrical storm where the lightning was, it, was, was it super, everywhere was it super all super loud when it happened? Like, it was, did you know, there were oh, several, oh God, we just got hit by lightning. Like, was no. it clear? No, we didn't know because there were so many lightning bolts that were hitting could, could around or over us. Okay. Um, wow. We only learned later that, that, that the car had been hit. Um, and it was, you know, drove okay. But the only thing that never, can make that story worse, I think, is if you had, you're going through Indiana, so how do we make, localize it? It's a Kasingle, um, <laughs> which I think is a trademark of IRS records. But you have a Kasingle of um, a Blood on the Scarecrow by favorite <laughs> son, John Cougar Mellencamp Cougar. And like, you got to listen to that all the time. You know, <laughs> on the Scarecrow, Blood on the Plow. God, what an overrated period. Just, you know, stick to your knitting, John. Like, d- d- just do the thing you're good at. Stop trying to be a, the fucking Indiana's gold. Boy, what if it had been a Kasingle? Even just it having any Kasingle. Kasingle. Just the, the oh, mind-numbing oh, 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 repetition. Oh, I could feel it. I could feel it. It's it's a maxi Kasingle of... Um, uh, power station. Ooh, that, yeah. It's really, really, really long. I think most likely at, in that era it would have been uh, Axel F. Oh. The, uh, oh. By, by the way, my daughter, my four-year-old daughter, loves Axel F, as performed oh. by Crazy Frog. Uh, <laughs> is that It's Raining Tacos? No, that's Perry Grip. Who's, <laughs> cra- crazy Frog. Well, it's, is, it's, is, is it's the, you know, it, it eventually finds its way into... But it starts out with a, with a really... Rousing, uh, for about 40 seconds, um, and then on a loop. So you play that again and again, but it's uh, four year olds when you ask them what song would you like to hear because we're all taking turns for dance party, and she will always say Crazy Crazy Frog. Wow, yeah, is there a way to make that about the Lord? Well, some songs you don't have to change at all. You just have to change your your whole, you know, your deal. Change your deal. Yeah, and every song's song, about the song Lord. By, the, change your deal, not the song. I mean, you know, dress for the Jesus you want. But you take something like that song by the law. It's called There She Goes, which apparently is not about a girl. It's apparently about heroin. Mm-hmm. So oh, like, is that you right? Can have, I think that, I don't know if that's right. They're from Liverpool. There's a lot of shipping. Yeah. <laughs> but the, I think there are, there are times where like you can bring your own meaning to it. But like we could also, we could read against the grain, you know. We could, we, yeah, yes. Absolutely, we we can make uh, Metallica's "Fade to Black" um, uh, be about grace rather than imminent suicide and a totally fucking terrible chromatic guitar solo. We can do that for you, or we can do the other way around. You know, How we can make a chromatic guitar solo be terrible. I don't believe it. <laughs> uh, you know, I don't. I hate to get, get into this and be this particular guy, but it was all James. It was always all James. Kirk, yeah. they, they, they didn't even know like what state he was in most of the time. He just was like, oh, play fast and hit a couple of the notes. <laughs> yeah, he really, he really robbed a lot of the gravitas from those songs with the twiddly do. <laughs> <clears throat> um, I, I imagine we're done here, but I haven't tuned. But I'm just going to start playing it. Well, why don't See. you play us out, Merles? <laughs> And then later on you get It's a great song It's a great song You need the wrist cuffs to to really sell it (laughs) Yeah But I want to do it more like um, Not Andre Segovia But like Paco Paco de Lucia Oh there has to be a There has to be a flamenco one Right? (laughs) Flamenco one? Is that a a satellite station? (laughs) No, oh, there's, a, there's a Uno. One. Uno. Yes. <laughs> but like without Demiola, you do like a Mediterranean sun dance kind of thing. Apparently, this is the only thing I know how to play. Is the is this, this? Or like you do like the Bombaleo guys in the Big Lebowski. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Except instead of Hotel California, you know, it's a fade to black. This has been You Look Nice Today. Tennis on the King. Thank you. <laughs>